This is my birthday tribute to your Vat. On October 10th, listening to the many speakers describe your Vat's activities as a scientist and an educator and an administrator and a parent, and his good works in Armenia and Greece, and his efforts on behalf of NASA and the Square Kilometer Array. It was daunting for a retired attorney without any credentials in science and any experience as an educator to think what might usefully be added. But I finally did realize there was one thing I would like to talk about, a facet of your vaunt that is not so visible, but I think was touched on, at least glancingly, in uh, Phil and Maddie Handler's lovely documentary about your vaunt, and which I've been in a privileged position to observe over more than the last 10 years. Uh, it, to present this, uh, I have to introduce another character. Um, that character is Barbara, whom most of you will know, either because you fielded questions from her or you've observed her uh, ask questions after lectures and panels that we've all attended. But in any case, she really is the most inquisitive person I've ever known. And it's not just teachers and lecturers that she directs questions to. She's just as apt to direct a question at a museum guard walking through a gallery where she's puzzling over some aspect of a Van Gogh painting. Uh, she'd rather have the curator, but if the guard is handy, she'll ask the guard. She's also uh, not phased by the notoriety or celebrity of someone she may have a question for, and I've watched her ask uh, Steven Weinberg, the Nobel laureate in physics, why he thought a universe that could make life out of matter was any less remarkable if it only did so in terms of natural causes and not supernatural, Weinberg being a well-known atheist. And Weinberg, uh, showing why he got the Nobel Prize, I guess, answered her question with a question, although it was a rhetorical one. He said, when did I ever say the universe wasn't remarkable? Anyway, uh, however many questions she's directed at museum guards or curators or uh, Nobel laureates or even Ira, who, to whom it generally falls to answer the questions that she poses under the heading Barbara Asks and the periodic issues of the uh, Orion, uh, she has directed exponentially more questions at Yervant. And Yervant has unfailingly responded with humor and poise and patience and graciousness. And that's really what I'd like to describe. Um, takes going back something over 10 years to a uh, seminar that Martha Haynes and Yervant were conducting uh, in connection with a visit to the National Radio Astronomy Observatory in Greenbank, West Virginia. Yervant was addressing a bunch of us non-scientists and he asked us a question. He said, um, and I'm going to paraphrase it roughly, what did we foresee for the species, the planet, the galaxy over the next thousand 10,000 million years, looking far into the future. And we all dutifully scribbled away on the index cards we'd been given for the purpose and passed them down to the front of the room, and Yervant began reading through them, adding his own uh, observations and humorous comments, until he came to the sixth or seventh, and uh, that brought him to a halt, and with a smile playing about his lips, he looked up at Barbara and he said, well, this person says, I don't do answers, I only do questions. And he laughed. And that was the humor. Um, and that was, for me at least, the beginning of this extended interchange, which has gone on over more than 10 years. Um, the next thing I'd mentioned occurred about two years later at another seminar that Yervant was conducting for non-scientists at Skytop in Pennsylvania. Uh, Yervat was starting uh, sort of the, the, the keynote lecture, the beginning lecture of the, of the program, and he had launched into his first sentence, and he said, um, the fundamental laws of physics are time-reversible, Barbara. Now, Barbara wasn't 
intended to be part of that first sentence, but she had her hand up before he could finish it. So as he always does, he recognized her, and she said, what about the second law of thermodynamics? And Yervant said, for that purpose, this purpose, that's not a fundamental law of physics. And turned to resume his talk, as Barbara said, isn't that cheating? But Yervant didn't miss a beat, and he picked up where he had left off and went on, and, and that was the poise. And then, I'll bring it much closer to the present, uh, only a, a year or two ago, there was an article in a magazine called The New Scientist, which is a British magazine, news, science news magazine, uh, that was headlined, Humble Fruit Fly Can Make Its Own Decisions. And the lead paragraph said, Fruit flies have free will, even when deprived of any sensory input to react to the zigs and zags of their flight reveal an intrinsic, non-random, yet still unpredictable, decision-making capacity. This was a serious article about a set of experiments that were done by two biologists. Well, I knew that there were going to be repercussions because this was a subject, the, the time-honored issue of free will versus determinism, that Barbara had discussed with Yervant before and was well aware of his position on, and I knew she would be writing to him, and she did. Uh, what I didn't foresee was that this would begin a series of email exchanges that took place o daily over a number of weeks, in which Barbara would launch a series of questions or challenges in the morning in an email, and sometime during the evening or the night, Yervat would come back with a very closely reasoned and calm set of unprovoked answers. And this went on for several weeks until it became obvious even to Barbara that uh, this was probably uh, inconsiderate of Yervant's always busy schedule. And so she ended one of her long pages of email questions with the remark that, you know, Yervant, you're free to choose not to answer my questions. Now, this was generous, except, of course, you have to recognize that there was sort of the zinger in there, the free to choose part was something of a provocation, but Yervat was up to this, and as he always did, he answered the questions, and when he got to the end of his own email, he said, I do not feel I'm free to choose not to answer your emails. I have to when the questions are so intelligent. And there is the patience and the graciousness. So, Here's a man who, in the midst of everything that all the other speakers have talked about, finds time to answer questions from a non-scientist, not a young aspiring scientist, just someone who's curious. And if he's done it for Barbara, I can't imagine he hasn't done it for many others. And all I can say in Barbara's case is she certainly owes him her own tribute and she has prepared one, which is in a separate video on this playlist. And all I've got to say is, happy birthday, Yervon, and thank you.